Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you part two of this series on how to properly calibrate or micro-adjust AFMA um, autofocus on a camera. And in today's episode, we're specifically going to look at how to accomplish that by using software that automates the process. Now, we're going to find out that as a part of doing this, there's a few things that you're going to need. And so we'll start by running through those. For myself, for several years now, about three or four years, I've been using a piece of software from a company called Rican. It's called Focal, and it automates the process. And so I recommend that you check out. They have different levels of the software, and I'll throw a link to it down in the description below. And But it's, its entire purpose is about lens calibration and automating that process. And it'll work on a number of different camera systems, but you might want to check out your camera body that you're having or camera bodies and make sure that they're on the list of supported cameras for it. And so that, of course, is the first step. Also note that some camera bodies, for example, my 6D or a Canon 80D, for example, it can fully automate those processes in that you can just basically set up the, the test, you can click start, and it will run through the whole process. Some other cameras like 5D, the 5D series, for example, the 5DS or 5DSR or my 5D Mark IV, um, it's a, just a slightly bit more involved process in that it requires you, for whatever reason, the camera um, firmware doesn't allow the software to actually change the, the settings in the camera for doing AFMA. And so you actually have to manually enter the values that it wants. It will uh, prompt you to do so. And after you've changed it, you click OK and the process continues on. So we'll look a little bit further at that process in just a few moments. So what we're going to need is you're going to need a good test chart. And the test chart is important because it gives a high contrast area for the software to lock on. And uh, Rican has some specific test charts that are designed to work with the software. And, and it will also help you to make sure that everything is set up properly and that it's everything is framed in the right way. And so you can run a test validation uh, mode that will help you to set up the, the target. And beyond that, you're going to need a good light on your, your subject. And so if you don't have fixed lights of some kind or a very, very bright room, you're probably going to need to go outside with this test. Just note that you have to watch for, uh, on a partly cloudy day, if you have varying light, that the software doesn't like that. And the more light, really for the most part, the better. And if you're shooting a lens with a very wide aperture, say a f1.4 lens, you can get away with a little bit less light, but if you're shooting a lens, for example, like one of the 150 to 600 millimeter lenses, and you're on that telephoto end, and it only has a maximum aperture of f6.3, you're going to need a lot more light to properly illuminate the subject. The other thing is you want to make sure that you have a good stable tripod and that you're not bumping it or on a, a surface that flexes because if you do so, it's going to introduce vibration into the equation. And again, that's going to throw the software off. And so if those are a few things to watch out for. Now, depending on your camera body, you're either going to need a USB 2.0 or a USB 3.0 cord. The one that came with your camera is just fine. Connect that up. And uh, the other thing you're going to also need to make sure is that for Canon shooters, you're in AV mode, or for Nikon shooters, you're in A mode, because that is what is required. That's the only way that the software will work. And so uh, just make sure that you get those, those kinds of things taken care of out of the way. You're going to want to make sure that the camera is lined up square with your test target. And you're going to want to make sure that the center point, or if you're in live view mode, the center box is situated right in the middle of the target. And once you've gotten that set up and you can verify that, that you can run through a test in the software that will actually help you to get that set up. One final thing to watch for is if you're using a lens that has an image stabilizer, VC, OS, whatever the case may be, you're going to want to turn that off, as you really should if you're using that lens on a tripod at any point. And uh, it will give you a warning about that. Now, one other piece of information you're going to want to know is that Rican has a recommendation for how far away you should be when you run this test process. And uh, they typically rec recommend somewhere around 50 times the focal length. 
So for example, if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, that's going to give you a focus distance of 250, uh, basically it'll come out to 250 uh, centimeters or 2.5 meters. And so that's basically the range that you want to be about 2.5 meters away. And that will give you the most kind of consistent results. So as we can see with the uh, calibration of the 5D Mark IV, um, that it's a little bit different a process using the RICAN Focal software and you can see I'm using Focal Pro and 2.4.5 version. So if we go to the automatic focus calibration, this is what you get and uh, I've already shown you the target setup here. And so we're going to go ahead and just click start. And, uh, and so it just gives you a notification that it's going to save your camera settings, which is important of course. So now what will begin to happen is that it will begin to take photos and analyze them. And so you have some options in terms of whether you want it to shoot raw files, whether you want it to shoot JPEG files. And in fact, here on the 5D Mark IV, you even have the, um, the ability to choose the dual pixel raw uh, files to uh, get a little bit further information. But once it has begun to compile information, um, what it will do is it will start to give you feedback. Now with some cameras you can just sit back and relax and let it do its thing, but other bodies like the 5D Mark IV will require you to physically interact and actually change the setting on the camera and then to click OK once you have already done that. And so that process will continue and you will uh, change the physical setting a few times while the software begins to analyze how consistently a result it's getting. And so you can see that it's checking the quality of focus down in this area. And uh, then it will start to give you feedback after this is run for a few minutes. I'm going to uh, speed up the process and we'll run through it together. We'll uh, give you a value at the end that it is settled on and you can determine whether or not that is a step in the right direction. So we'll come back and we'll look at that at the end and uh, then also We'll take a look at how you can also throw Sigma's USB dock or uh, Tamron's um, console, tap-in console into the mix as well. Please review information on the screen. So there you see it's run through the process. Now, in this case, I actually feel like the value that was already in there, the value of plus one is better than the value that it returned. But that's the reason why I will frequently run uh, the Focal test usually two or three times at least and try to get a consensus to make sure I'm getting the best possible result. So what happens if you have one of the newer lenses from Sigma or Tamron and you have their respective USB dock or tapping console, how do we make these two pieces of software work together? But what you're going to want to do is that with either the Sigma or the Tamron console, what they allow you to do is to run calibration at different focus distances. And so you're going to go, want to go into the software and look at those recommended distances for the individual one. So let's say that I am using the tap-in console, for example. And so it tells me that it wants to first shoot at a, a minimum focus distance that's quite close. So what I would then do is I would set up the, uh, the calibration at that recommended distance and maybe run it a few times, get a value you feel confident in, in the camera. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hook up the lens to the actual tapping console or USB dock. You're going to go into that and you're going to change that value for that focus distance to the one that you got running the calibration software. Now, here's an important step. Once you have entered that into the lens itself, you need to go back into the camera body, go into the menu, and you need to zero out the calibration value that you put into the camera itself. Because now instead of having a value, just one value in the camera body, you're going to have a value for that particular focus distance input into the lens. Then you can run it again at the medium distance, repeat that same process, and then run it again at infinity and repeat that same process. At the end of running all of these calibrations, however, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that in the camera body itself, you have a zero value that is input because with the USB dock or the tapping console, all of that AFMA information is actually input into the lens itself. 
Thus, there is no additional calibration that is needed in the camera body. And so if you'll run through that process, while it is a bit time consuming, I have found that it enables you to really unleash the potential of some of your third party lenses. And for example, my 45, I have two of these uh, prime lenses from Tamron, the 45 millimeter and the 85 millimeter VC lenses. And I find that they are giving me the most consistent third party autofocus performance that I've ever seen that really is is right on par with first party options in that same focal length. And so in conclusion, this hopefully will give you an idea of the process that I personally use for calibrating lenses and uh, will give you an idea of how the software that I typically use works and a lot as well as how the tap-in or the uh, USB dock, how that those work with third party lenses as a part of that overall mix. Now, stay tuned for the final episode, and in that final episode, if you're not interested or you can't afford to invest in software to automate the process, I'm going to show you an alternate method that I use that requires no extra software at all and how that you can manually run focus calibration and still get very consistent results. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you missed the first part in this series, it helps, to un helps you to understand what micro-adjustment actually is and why it's important. I'd encourage you to take a look at that episode. And of course, if you haven't already, please sign up for my newsletter or follow me on social media. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.